In this video, we're going to introduce the greatest common factor and the least common multiple using application problems. And just so you know, sometimes we call the greatest common factor the GCF for short and the least common multiple the LCM for short. So let's look at the first example and build up this idea. So it's a word problem, so I'm getting my highlighters ready. You and your friends are sending care packages to military service members overseas. Each package will contain brownies and cookies. You have 20 brownies and 12 cookies. Every package made needs to be identical. So that's given information. Then I see the question coming, so I'm going to grab the green highlighter. What is the greatest number of packages you can send that meets this requirement? So let's start to think of this in terms of the brownies and the cookies, how we can break up the brownies. So there are 20 brownies. And the ways we can break them up. So we could have just one package with, I'll use that for package, with 20 brownies in it. We could have two packages with 10 brownies in them. Okay. Uh, notice we can't have three packages because we'd have to break up a brownie, so 20 is not divisible by three. We could have four packages with five brownies in them each. Okay. Uh, we could have five packages, so we've actually gotten notice all of our common factors here, one time or factor pairs, one times 20, two times 10, four times five. But we can switch these around, and I'm going to write these also because they are the number of packages versus brownies. So we could have five packages with four brownies each. We could have ten packages with two brownies each. And we could have twenty packages with one brownie each. So these are all the ways that we could break up the brownies into different packages so each package would have the same amount of brownies. So now let's see what we could do with the cookies. So we have 12 cookies. We could have one package with 12 cookies. We could have two packages with six cookies. Notice I'm just doing factor pairs, 1 times 12, 2 times 6. And we can have three packages with four cookies. Now we can also consider the reverse of these, exchanging the packages and the cookies. So we could have four packages with three cookies each. And we could have six packages with two cookies each. Or we could have 12 packages with one cookie each. So these are all the ways that we can break up the cookies so each package has the same amount of cookie. Any other numbers, so numbers that aren't factors of 12 would give us partial cookies, and any numbers that aren't factors of 20 would give us partial brownies. So now, remember we want the greatest number of packages we can send. Well, in order for this to work, it would have to be a number of packages that we could break both the brownies and the cookies into. So let's see what they have in common. So they have one package in common. They have two packages in common. Okay. 12 can be broken into 3, but notice 20 can't. 20 can be broken into 4, and so can 12. And here we have 5, 10, 20, and here we have 6 and 12. So these are the factors they have in common. So the common factors of 20 and 12 are 1, 2, and 4. Now, so we could actually make uh, these care packages, either one care package, two care packages, or four 
care packages, and all of these amounts with, would work with brownies and cookies being evenly distributed. But since we want the greatest number of packages, the greatest common factor, I'm going to write CF, is going to be the largest number in this list of numbers, and that would be 4. So our answer to this question is the greatest number of packages is 4. So this is our first example of a greatest common factor. So looking at 20 and 12, if we found all the factors, okay, which we did here, and we switched around the, the brownies and packages to distinguish between them, but we were focused on the packages. If we found all of the factors, then found the ones they have in common, so factors they each have, and then we find the largest one, this is the greatest common factor. Let's look at the next example. So I'm going to get my highlighter ready. Judy and Dan are running around a track. Judy can run one lap. Oops, it's not a highlighter. Judy can run one lap in three minutes while it takes Dan four minutes. If they both start at the same time, so that's still given information, and now we have our goal. I see the question coming. How many minutes will it take them to meet? So let's start by just drawing a picture of this. Okay, so they're both starting. So the track probably, they're usually somewhat oval. And maybe there's some starting point here. So Judy and Dan are going to start together, and they're each running this way. But notice, Judy can run a lap in three minutes, so she's going to be in front of Dan. Okay, and she's going to be in front of Dan for a while till eventually she has run one more lap than Dan and she catches up, or at least one more lap. So let's see what this would look like. So instead of making a circle, I'm going to make a line, and this is going to be for Judy. Okay, and I'm going to label it in a couple of ways. So on top, I'm going to put time. And on the bottom, I'm going to put laps. I'm just going to make a number line. So at the start, she's been running for zero minutes, and she's gone zero laps. Okay. Now, let's make this one lap. So it takes her three minutes to run one lap. So after three minutes, she's run one lap. After six minutes, she's run two laps. Three minutes later, she's run another lap. And I'm just going to continue this for a little while until I run out of room here. 15 minutes, 5 laps, 18 minutes, 6 laps. Okay. So now let's look at Dan. So this is going to be time, and this is going to be laps, and he starts at 0, 0 also. So they start at the same time, so these line up. But now it takes him 4 minutes to run a lap. And I'm going to try to make these line up as well as I can. So he's going to finish his first lap around here. This is lap 1, 4 minutes. At about 8 minutes, so somewhere in here, he's going to finish his second lap. And then at another four minutes later, at 12 laps, 12 minutes, excuse me, he's going to finish his third lap. At 16 minutes, he's going to finish his fourth lap. And let's just do one more. 20 minutes, he's going to finish his fifth lap. Okay, So they are going to meet if they are finishing a lap at the same time. So... Let's look at these. Well, what numbers are corresponding here in terms of time? So not 3 and 4, 6 and 8, or 9, but they both have completed a lap after 12 minutes. So after 12 minutes, we're just going to draw a little picture here. Judy's been ahead of Dan. She goes one lap, two laps, three laps, and then it's been 12 minutes and she's here. 
four, four laps, sorry, because she's going three laps a minute. And then Dan, well, he's at four, then he's at eight minutes, and then after three laps, he's done 12 minutes, and this is where they match up. Now, what I want you to notice is that these numbers, these times that we wanted to find when they corresponded are multiples of the numbers three and four. So one way to find multiples is, just going to erase this, is you can think 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. So these are multiples of 3 because you're multiplying the number 3 by some other whole number. Another way to think of these to get the next one is to just add a 3 to the previous one. So 3, this is like skip counting from when you were younger. 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, and I'm just going to do a bunch more. So 18, 21, 24, 27. So these are multiples of 3. And notice it's not all of them. They'll keep going on forever. Now, Multiples of 4, we can start with 4 and keep adding 4. So 4 and 4 is 8, 8 and 4 is 12, 12 and 4 is 16, 16 and 4 is 20, 20 and 4 is 24, 24 and 4 is 28, 28 and 4 is 32, etc. So notice in this list we actually could see that there are two common multiples. And notice there's actually going to be common multiples forever. There's no largest common multiple of these two numbers. Notice that 24 is 2 times 12. Well, if we keep adding 12, those are all both going to be multiples of 3 and 4. Okay, so that's why we're interested in finding the least common multiple. So the first time it will take them to meet, and that will be after 12 minutes. So, Judy and Dan will meet after or at 12 minutes, okay, because that's the least common multiple. And again, if they kept running forever, they'd keep meeting again at 24, 36, etc.